What's up, guys? It's KB. Make sure you subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. Click the bell icon down below so you don't miss a single video from us. And thanks for tuning in to another video from Underground Sports Philadelphia. Now let's get into it. Philadelphia, baby. You're going to love it. Best sports fans in the world. Actually the worst, but that's what makes them the best. Welcome in to Get in the Hole. Stephen McAvoy, Ben Pirro here. Joining you on another week in, on the PGA Tour. This tour is over, but we still have plenty of drama to go over from the live side of things, as well as a myriad uh, of players got their PGA Tour cards. But we begin this week with Phil Mickelson. Who else but Phil? Following Live Boston, had an interview this past week, told ESPN, had some uh, choice words about, about Live Golf and the PGA, and uh, elaborated a little more on this now two two-party system that we have in the golf world. Ben, he said, quote, I think players on both sides of Live and the PGA Tour are appreciative of what is happening, meaning uh, the changes that, that have come both on the PGA Tour side as well as just the implementation um, of Live Golf and what it's done for the sport. Every player is benefiting. There, is no, there was no leverage. There was no other options. I'm extremely happy that the top, top players are being listened to and that their input is being valued and that those events are coming about. What should we make of these comments as we just jump right into things? Uh, what should we make of Phil's comments? Do we think that while, yes, he believes that the Live Golf PJ Tour system and how all these rules have come about, um, they are a good thing to a degree. We've seen a lot of changes that will come in 2023. We're going to talk a bit about that on the back side of the show here. But do you think Phil's comments are accurate from, an, for, for, from the per, per, per perspective of the fact that we have a two-party system in golf? Okay, so... Yes, I do believe that they are accurate, but once again, he's missing the boat, just like most people are missing the boat. He specifically referenced how the top players are being listened to. Well, as I've stated numerous times, what about the guys that aren't the top players, the guys who are journeymen? the 35 year olds with a wife, two kids and a mortgage. Why aren't we listening to them as well? It's just to the point now, I, look, I was never a Phil fan. I never have been. Um, I thought honestly, like he was like kind of fake, not going to lie. Um, and, uh, and honestly, based on a lot of the things I've heard about him. Yeah, he is kind of fake. And I definitely think, he, he is right. Yes, there have definitely been changes made. Uh, one of the changes I do like is the minimum salary of $500,000, whether you're on Corn Ferry or PJ Tour. It doesn't really make much sense to me, though, why it's the same for both of those tours. Um, but that's a discussion for another day um, because the PJ Tour is clearly the goal if you're on Corn Ferry Tour. Um, but I guess, yes, he is right that there are being changes made. I'm just not happy that we're only listening still to the top players. That still bothers me. His comments were, I think, yes, they're accurate in the case that while Liv Goff's done, done a really good job, um, I'll be straight up, straight up about it, and I've been commenting this for, for months now, that the production value is incredible. PJ Tour is trying to emulate it um, very clearly with what we saw with Tiger and Rory's new technological adventure. Um, the opening ad for that was basically a live ad and almost stole the live ad of um, golf, but louder, but instead basically was like, Oh, the golf, but tech, like it was the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. So live golf brought about a whole new way uh, wave of things that the PGA tour is trying to do. And again, we'll talk more about that, like that minimum salary and the new changes that, that are coming, mm -hmm. but you're right. He did miss the boat, but at the same time though, these top players are now getting, getting listened to more uh, the input from tiger and Rory and rookie Fowler. Very clearly this players only meeting has, has spurred something considering Jay Monahan in about a three week time has gone from, we're just going to ban everything about, about live stick to our own roots and say traditional to now. Okay. We need to change and, and let's kind of adapt to what's going on. And a lot of what they're adapting is literally what um, live is trying to do. A lot of players were, were vouching for the team style um, system that live has. I think it's a really good thing. I think a lot of players want to do more things like that. Like we, we see events like the Zurich classic where you have team style events, but 
it'd be nice to have more of those. Have a uh, four-man scramble tournament style, like whatever you happen to make it. And there's obviously things that are being discussed right now um, with those changes. They want to make more alternate events, more team friendly. They want to introduce more new styles of golf, whether it be like Stableford's uh, scoring or whatever you happen to go about it with. But I think those comments were really accurate. It's, it, it, it is showing that the two party system works. The only problem is, and what we've seen for the last three months now is we've now gotten a new wave of players to go to live. We've gotten Joaquin Neiman. We've gotten Cam Smith. Um, those two really are the driving force behind the newest wave of guys. Not not, not to say, say the rest are important, but you lost a 22-year-old player from Chile who hasn't really had, had a shot outside of um, the, the Genesis to get a to get a big-time win on tour. He's been in the conversation as a top 25 player in the world. I believe he's 22 right now. So he's very clearly already on his way. And then you lose the number two ranked player in the world. Uh, the question for me now is, while, yes, it's great to have Liv and, and the PGA because they're not kind of learning from each other, at what point might we see too many guys go to Liv? And now all of a sudden there's a uh, competitive imbalance. Now, not to say it'll never happen because I don't think it will. Uh, just considering the talent level that we have on the Corn Ferry Tour and the guys that are coming up, up in the college ranks. Like, for example, um, guys earned their tour cards this past uh, week after the KF KFT final 50 guys are, are, are coming back to the tour or are going to have a um, rookie status on, on tour. Justin Sue is one of the, is one of the be be best, best young players in the world. And then you have guys like Cole Hammer and Pearson Cody who didn't even get their card. So there's already talent being built up in the pipeline. Um, but I do think Phil's comments were at least a little bit more accurate than we're kind of making it out to be. Uh, he also, made, he also ha had a comment saying that, that he wasn't vindict vindictive towards the tour and that, the only reason why he left was because there was no um, collaboration between him and Monaghan and kind of bashed him a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I think overall um, the comments were more, were more than right. Yeah. He missed the boat, but there's still a lot of things that, uh, that, that have gone right with this system. Are you done? What? Are you done? Yeah, I am done. Uh, I was, I was hoping you, you, you had a, uh, a rebuttal to that or something well okay first of all phil left the pga tour because the pga tour told him to get lost yeah That's basically yes yeah. and phil went to live because um you know money talks as i've said numerous times on this podcast and phil has had gambling issues in the past who knows how much he's actually lost but it's been severe enough to where he's had to go to therapy for it so that's why he ended up going to live. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing, there will never be a competitive imbalance ever between live and the PGA Tour. The PGA Tour always have, strong, have stronger competition. Of course. And the reason for that is because Greg Norman said on Fox to Tucker Carlson, I watched his interview, how he's quote unquote said, how he said quote unquote, we're all, we're all filled up is essentially what he said. We're all filled up. I have players calling me uh, saying that they want to join, which is hilarious because John Gruden, when he joined the Raiders, said the exact same thing <laughs> uh, that people were calling and they wanted to join the Raiders, okay? Um, so who knows? Maybe players have been calling. I doubt it. Um, and as you know, I am, I am a fan of Liv. I think it's great for golf. Uh, you might not agree. A lot of people might not agree with me. People might think I'm a bad person because I think it's a good thing. Whatever. That's fine. Um, but at the end of the day, these players are now signed to contracts. And I'm not sure how long the contracts are, but I'm assuming they're for multiple years. And the PGA Tour isn't having to hold their breath on a Lee Westwood or a Graham McDowell or an Ian Poulter or a Mark Leishman, players who are clearly past their prime, mm -hmm. um, or a Brooks Kepka, who, quite frankly, is completely unlikable and never healthy, or Patrick Reed, who's completely unlikable and is filing a BS lawsuit against, like, Golf Channel um, in the PGA Tour. Um, the PGA Tour now... Their top players. I'm just. I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit. Just yeah. 
just for this is who's representing the U.S. in the President's Cup. Patrick Cantley, Justin Thomas, Xander Shoffley, Sam Burns, Scotty Scheffler, Tony Finau. That's an all-star team. That is an all-star team. That is the PGA Tour. That is like the core group of like just young Americans, okay? And then you have Roy McIlroy. You still have Ricky Fowler. Everybody loves Ricky Fowler. You still have Adam Scott. Um, so, and like, yes, you still have Tiger Woods, of course, even though he's going to play six times a year. <laughs> the PGA Tour will be just fine. The level of golf will be better than the Live Tour because the players are younger and they're better. Yes, they just lost the number two ranked player in the world. So what? They still have Roy McIlroy. They still have all of these other young Americans. The state of the PJ Tour is just fine. We're not even talking like Colin Morikawa. That's yeah. another incredibly likable guy. Exactly. The yeah, PJ like has guys that are young and likable. Live Golf has guys that are past their prime, overpaid, and are unlikable for the most part. I think the, think the funniest stat that I read, um, and this, like, <laughs> you want to talk how people are are knocking on the door and calling uh, calling Norman to try and get on tour. Uh, Pat Perez is on the Live Golf Tour, and look, Pat, Pat Perez can uh, can play me and drink me under the table, but he's earned like two and a half million dollars all on the coattails of his team winning. Yeah, uh, largely because Dustin Johnson just carries the load every single week, and mm -hmm. it's kind of it, it's very funny how it plays out because it's like him and Taylor Gooch have been top 10 in, in, in every event. I think Perez has finished like 32nd, 31st, uh, almost dead last, and I think a top 10 this past week. Um, there there has to be, be players that are better than Pat Perez trying to call to come on the Live Golf Tour. There has, there has to be someone better than, than an, an, an aging Lee Westwood and Ian Poulter to want to come and play for Live. I, 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 can't, I can't even fathom... That there are guys, or like, like the seventeen-year-old Thai kid. Can't even tell you what his name is. Who's yeah, on, who's on the live tour? You're telling me a seventeen-year-old's going to get a spot over? Let's just say someone in the top fifty, a random player at your choosing between thirty and fifty, who wants to get involved. They would most certainly get, get like have the nod more than anybody else. But overall, that's we have to tra transition here. But at the same time, it's like. You got to think about where Greg Norman's coming from, and it's, it's like it's complete BS that he claims that everyone is trying to get there. Granted, look, the, the talent pool is great. You put Dustin Johnson, Joaquin Neiman, and, and Cameron Smith in, in a three-man scramble against some three Americans. I mean, uh, or just PGA players like like Scheffler, Morikawa, and JT. It'd be pretty even. Like it would, it's pretty good. No, no it like, would. Like the, the the deeper you the, the, the deeper down the line you go, you're gonna have Charles Schwartzel, and then it's like Billy Horschel. Like the, the gap is huge. Exactly. There's the look, and the, the the thing is, the PJ Tour by default has more players, so they should be deeper. Yeah. But still, the talent level on tour is much deeper. And the flaw with the, I will say, there's, in my opinion, there are several flaws with Live, just like there are several flaws with the PGA Tour. Yeah. No one is. I, I'm a professional golfer. I do not go to golf tournaments to watch Brooks Kepka or Pat Perez or, I don't know, uh, Graham McDowell or Charles Schwartz. I'm sorry, I don't. We are shitting I, on Graham McDowell today. This is a bad day for him. I can't stand Graham McDowell. <laughs> I really can't. Um, Punchable face. believe that uh, <laughs> no but my point though my point to you steven is like those are the people that they're marketing yeah i'm not dropping 75 bucks to go watch those guys play if i'm gonna go watch someone play i'm gonna be like i'm gonna go watch colin morikawa because he's fun to watch he's a nice guy he's got a beautiful golf swing and he's really freaking good or i don't know i'm gonna go watch uh, tony finau because he's a goofball and he's hilarious, he's hilarious and he's so likable and a great golfer. Like I don't know, that's just I'll go watch Justin Thomas. Guys, five nine hits the country mile. Go watch Victor Hovland, a, a total total goofball. Like really, it, I don't it, know it, nothing about Victor Hovland. <laughs> oh come on, he he's so fun. I love I love that guy. 
Transitioning though over to to some more uh, lived on. Of course, the PJ Tour is going to be always stronger, but one of the biggest factors currently in the fact that the PGA tour is stronger than live golf comes down to its official world golf rankings points. And Cameron Smith said uh, on Monday in his first press conference with live, he said that it is unfair. Players are not getting official world, world golf ranking points. I just Googled uh, the court filing this morning to get a bit, to get a bit of an update. Uh, it's currently in process. It's being read right now. Uh, a announcement should come in the next month determining whether or not live players will receive it. They are not anticipating to possibly get it out by the end of the live season, which will end uh, in late, I believe late October, the final week in October, they're playing out a uh, Trump Doral in Miami. So wow. they are not, they are not expected to get an announcement by then, but with the odds, not so in their favor as of right now, do you believe it is unfair that they are, that, that, that they aren't receiving it as a startup tour, or at least be given the courtesy for players to finish the year out with what they had uh, throughout this throughout this season's uh, points? No. They should not be getting world ranking points. They shouldn't be getting world ranking points. There, it's three rounds. It's three rounds. Make it four rounds, and then we'll have a discussion. Now, now is that the only reason? Is it because, because the PGA Tour is a four-round event? Do you, do you think it still is unfair regardless even though even though there's a it's the highest level of competition and that's not given field um i mean look the asian tour gives out world ranking points and you know i would assume i think it's safe to say the pj tour has higher level of competition than the asian tour or the uh or pj tour Austra uh or uh, pj tour australia i believe uh the sunshine tour in africa those tours give out world ranking points um, but they're four rounds. Their tournaments are four rounds, unless for some reason a round is canceled due to weather or mm-hmm. some other factor. Um, look, Cam Smith, you knew damn well that you were not going to receive world ranking points. And they have been complaining about this for months, basically since they launched their first live event. I believe it was over in England. So everyone knew you are not going to get world ranking points, at least not yet. And you don't deserve to get world ranking points because it's three rounds. Unless they can figure out a way to fairly structure the point system to account for the difference in number of rounds played, I would be good with that. I don't know how they would. But as far as I'm concerned, unless it's if it's not four rounds, it's not worthy of world ranking points. Sorry, it's not because so, yeah, there's, it's it's so hard to play four great rounds of golf in a row. It's hard enough to play three. It's incredibly hard to play four great rounds in a row. I found this really interesting. I'm currently reading the criteria it takes to to join uh, the OWGR. It requires that a tour provides a pathway for its players onto the full member tour that is proposing the application. So, um. Live Golf did announce that 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 they're trying to utilize the Asian Golf Tour as well as a possible startup tour in the 2024 to create a pathway up towards Live. So as of right now, the, the, they don't meet that box. Uh, some other boxes that I actually f- found interesting, aside from the four round uh, requirement, your tour must operate at least ten events per year. They have eight this year, so yeah. they don't get it anyways. Uh, must have a heavy minimum purse of 50k. No, obviously, they're gonna. Clear the, clear the bar uh, well on that one. Average field size is of 75 players. Obviously, they're only at 48. Yeah. Um, let's see where else we are. There are some where they kind of fit into the gray area, but I find it really interesting that they allegedly claim that they have enough to find their way, but they don't. Um, there's also a requirement that they require – Hold on, wait, wait, what did it say here? You must have an average strength of field around 100 in order to qualify for official World Golf Ranking points. Um, the Allegedly, because of, of the 48-man field, their numbers are actually inflated. So Live Golf projected their strength of field to be equal to what the PGA Tour had at the U.S. Open in, what, in, their, in their event at Bedminster. Really? Which is like an eight thirty, which is like insane, which is totally really? false. That's ridiculous. What? 
Um, in, in comparison, the Punta Cana, uh, the, the Corrales Punta Cana Championship had a strength of field of 26. That's an alternate event on, on the PGA Tour yeah. with 140 players, largely comprised of KFT players. And I believe the highest ranked player at the time was Patrick Reed, I think, which was like 50th. So you need a lot to have a strength of strength of field over 100. Um, you can't just have that with Bryson, DJ, Brooks, Cam Smith, and Joaquin Neiman. You have to have guys who like Henry uh, Jacques Duplé be better than what he actually already is. So very clearly they aren't going to be able to hit the mark here. I just find it really interesting that Cameron Smith is complaining ab- ab- about this. Meanwhile, he's been a part of the one tour. That's given him more uh, than his career could, could have, have ever wanted. I also think the Cameron Smith move is really like bizarre. Um, Smith and Neiman have so much going for them on the PGA Tour that, like, we, have, we haven't even t- like, talked about why why they even left. But why they would leave doesn't really make sense to me outside of the money they earned. At the same time, though, like, Cameron Smith had the opportunity to, to earn $36 million this year had he won uh, the Tour Final. He won the players. He won the British Open. He won the two, two of the five biggest events of the year. He finished top five in all of the elevated events that, that we're going to talk about um, on the new revamped PGA Tour next year. Like, why would you leave? Joaquin Neiman was in the same boat. I, I, I find that bizarre. Well, I mean, it, I think it's safe to say it's been a bizarre season in general. Probably, yeah. uh, I would say since probably February. Uh, right around like the Honda Classic when like the article about Phil came out or it was an article or a book. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was about Phil. Yeah. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's just a big money thing. And I've always thought it was BS that golf was basically one of two sports that did not have a base salary. And statistically golf is the, third most expensive sport to play yet there's no the, yet there wasn't a base salary it doesn't make any sense at all absolutely so look i know he's he was in line to win a lot of money if he had won the the uh the fedex cup and everything i get that he has made a lot of money in his career but you never know when there's going to be an injury there could be an accident a tragedy something like that and financially you want to be as secure as possible and so i don't fault anybody for going to live because the the opportunity to make so much money is so great but i think that there are it other than just the money i would say it's free travel because they have their own jet They pay the caddies. That's a huge deal. Like, if you miss the cut, you still have to pay your caddy. And actually, the caddies get the caddies make what was it, six hundred sixty thousand dollars a year just on live, just for the year. But that's incredible. Okay, like PJ Tour caddies would kill for that. So there are so many other factors, and live also covers the caddy fee. So there are so many other factors that go into it. Yes, of course, like they're going to make even more money now. But it's also like if I ever get hurt, if I go into a serious slump, like a David Duvall slump or something, yeah. or like an Anthony Kim situation where it's like I get hurt and now I can never play golf again, like they can just literally be like, well, you know what? I basically took like $125 million. That's not going away anytime soon. Yeah. Fine. So – that's my opinion. And and like in Cam Smith's case, if Hideki Matsuyama turned down what was what was allegedly a three hundred to four hundred million dollar offer, I can only imagine what Cameron Smith got. Oh so, my god, absolutely! Like probably made more. And actually, it's funny. P- players should have held out because oh Dustin yeah, Johnson, the Dustin Johnson's walking away with with one hundred fifty million dollars. Dustin but Johnson Cam- got completely screwed. Well, I, I mean, he had screwed. Bryson got screwed. Ian Poulter got screwed. Like all these guys could have made, I don't know, two hundred million dollars if they just held out a little bit towards yep. towards the end of their one final hey, heyday season. But it's 
bonkers, bonkers, how you can make $300 million. And, and look, you're totally right. The idea of an injury can happen, and, and we see it in every sport. Mm-hmm. Um, your whole career can kind of wipe away in an instant. But one person who has not had a uh, his career wipe away is Dustin Johnson. Once again, back out, wins Live Boston. Uh, I'm wearing my, my Boston Red Sox hat today in honor of Live Boston. What is wrong with you? I It's a nice hat. I love the Sox. I just like it. You disgust me. Continue. Look, I, I'm a Mets fan through and through, but my grandpa loved the Red Sox, so I, I'm a partial okay. fan. Anyways, okay. the Dustin Johnson comes out, wins uh, with his brother Austin on the bag in his third event with Live Golf, takes home the Live Boston title at the International Club. Uh, some really interesting performances from a lot of newcomers. Uh, Anirban Lahiri, the, the new uh, the new Indian player, comes in 15 under par, t- ties for second, along with, along with the other newcomer, Joaquin Neiman. Lee Westwood tied for fourth with Cameron Smith. Uh, Taylor Gooch finishes solo six at 13 under. Coke Rack, Answer, Sergio, and Louis Usazen round, oh, and Kevin Na round out the top 10 this week. Pretty, uh, this is a pretty good, like, final, like, like field to end with, like, leaderboard wise, mm-hmm. considering uh, a couple weeks prior, or, or, or actually a month prior, uh, at Bedminster, it was like Stenson, Wolf, DJ, Ortiz, Reed, Casey. Like Turk Pettit finished somewhere in the top ten, uh, and like like Marty Kamer. So very uh, very strong field here. What do we make of some of the guys who played really well, especially those newcomers like Harry Neiman and Smith, all finishing top five? What do you think of Live Golf this past week? If you even watched? Oh, look, like I didn't watch. I saw the replay of Dustin Johnson's uh, putt that he made. I mean, look, that that, thing. if that thing does not hit the hole, <laughs> it's close to being off the green. But look, it went in. Uh, he used the back of the cup. Good for him. Um, I mean, look, in my opinion, Dustin, I know he, I know why Cam Smith is ranked number two in the world. I get it. In my opinion, Dustin Johnson is the best golfer on in live golf, in my opinion. Easily, yeah. I, I, that's just my personal opinion. I know, like, say, like, the world ranking points might say otherwise, but that's just my opinion. As far as the newcomers go, everyone – someone said to me, they're like, well, who the hell is uh, An- Anabon Lahiri? He's actually been one of the most consistent players for a while now. And so him, Jockey Neiman, and Cam Smith, the fact that they finished um, – the first two, uh, Lahiri and Neiman finished both at 15 under and were in a playoff. Uh, and Cam Smith was one out of the playoff at 14 under. That does not a, not at all surprise me. Um, and actually, that's a good look for Liv. The fact that really three of their recent signings were so high up on the leaderboard, that's a very good look. Um, but to be honest, other players that they recently signed, such as Cameron Tringali, Mark Leishman, Harold Varner, they're not as good as as the the first three that I mentioned. Yeah. They're not as good as Dustin Johnson. So the fact that they finished five, four, and three under respectively, um, that doesn't surprise me either. Uh, it just shows once again, like we talked about before, the, the the serious gap in the level of play in live events. There's not really much of a middle ground. I mean, look, they're tour players. They're tour level players. Trent Gottlieb's been on tour for years. Um, Leishman's played on tour for years. I mean, Harold, Harold Varner, I believe he's won the PGA Tour. Multiple times, yeah. Um, so, but the level, uh, the different level of play is so vast. And that just kind of, kind of goes back to what we were talking about before. So, you know, you bring up a really good point with, uh, with, um, Anurban Lahiri, a lot of people don't know this. Uh, yeah. He has 18 pro like pro wins. He's incredible. Like it's it's hard to win five events, let alone you win 18 in your career. Granted, he didn't win any uh, on the PGA Tour, but he won. What's the number here? He won two uh, two in Europe. He won seven on the Asian Tour, and then won, won 12 on the uh, the Indian Pro Tour. This yeah. is like this is like when he first started. He wrapped up 12 wins in like five years. Yeah, 12 wins in five years on the Indian tour. Like incredibly impressive top top 100 player in the world. He actually he he might be one of the most underrated gets the that that that, that Liv Golf's gotten among everybody. 
Uh, I think Carlos Ortiz also kind of falls in that ca- in that like, category. Yeah. But you want to talk about about guys on the back end of the top 100 who like, can really hold their own in this league. And let's just say like Live Golf gets their own like point rankings. Let's just like because there was rumors that if they don't get a uh, World Golf ranking points, they're going to do their own like point point system ranking. Um, you might very well see Lahiri top five, top ten for the whole year. He's just that good uh, mm-hmm. of a golfer. Just of course. The PGA's strength of field is always so good that it's almost impossible for someone like him to compete against someone like Matt Fitzpatrick uh, week in and week out. It's just, it simply yeah. isn't happening. But yeah, like like th- this week alone, um, we kind of saw the strength of what Live Golf can, can can bring to the table and what they're sort of becoming. Because when you when you look at it, outside of Sergio, Louis, uh, and and Lee Westwood, I guess you could also put uh, Lahiri in the category. But everyone's under everyone's under forty. For the most part, they're all very young between uh, between like Answer, um, Joaquin Neiman, uh, obviously, and, T- and Taylor Gooch, Cameron Smith as well. Like these are guys 27, 28 years old, uh, and then as young as 25 um, or 22 in Joaquin Neiman's case that are now coming up, up the ranks. And you're right, Dustin Johnson probably is one of the best best golfers in the world. While the uh, World Golf Rankings won't say otherwise, um, he's still incredibly talented. I think that I, I watched a little bit this week. And I was awestruck by how well he was hitting the ball. Uh, he looked like 2020, 2020, 2019, 2020, like DJ, where it was like like the tail end um, of that prime. But he was just he was looking so good. Um, it also helps that I think a lot of these golf courses aren't as difficult as the hardest courses on the PGA Tour. But at the same time, these guys are playing but playing at um, courses that we haven't seen per se, and so and for the most part are pretty new to them as well. So still, still incredibly, incredibly uh, impressive. We're going to take a short break here on the backside. Once we come back, we're going to discuss who got their Corn Ferry Tour card upgraded to the PGA Tour card, who missed out, and a little bit of update on the President's Cup. Don't go anywhere. Stephen Ben right here on Get in the Hole. Welcome back in. It's Get in the Hole. Stephen Ben here. Ben, you cannot take your shirt off despite the text that you just sent me. I, Are you sure? I think it would be really good for viewership. I mean, if you want to. I was totally kidding. All right, great. I uh, just missed this before we uh, got the break. Literally literally saw the update as we were coming in. Uh, 20 players confirmed on the Live Tour to be playing next week at the BMW PGA Championship in England. Uh, they were asked by the uh, the heads of the event to not wear Live logos. Uh, in their contracts with Live, they are required to wear Live logos somewhere on their uniform, as many a, as they want. Obviously, Patrick Reed wears it like it's going out of style. Uh, what do you think is going to come down here with a lot of these guys uh, being asked politely to not play? Martin Kamer came out and said, I'm not going to play uh, because I don't want to make things awkward between some of my friends. Uh, do you think we might have a little bit of uh, some rude play ne- uh, th- this upcoming week at the BMW PJ Champ? I mean, I certainly hope not. Um, I, I like. I think it's ridiculous that they can't wear. Live is their spon- Live is a sponsor. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, that's like saying to, um, I don't know. That's like saying to Tom Brady, uh, you cannot wear a uniform. You, 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 the uniform that you wear on Sunday cannot have the NFL logo on it. Like, I don't know. I just think it's like. They should be allowed to wear. They should be allowed to wear uh, the Live Golf logo uh, wherever they want uh, because it is a sponsor. That being said, I wouldn't be surprised if there was kind of like foul play or a little bit of like not gamesmanship, but like chirping or you know BSing back and forth. I wouldn't be surprised. I hope it doesn't come to that because these guys are all adults. <laughs> and let's carry ourselves like adults. Let's not be brats. I mean, I think, you know, it's funny that like Rory McElroy um, is like all of a sudden becoming a trash talker now. Um, <laughs> I think it's, I think it's so cute. I think it is because I would just shut him up if it came down to it. Yeah. I mean, come on. Like I've heard him trash talk. He sounds like a he sounds like a fool. People that yeah. do sound like fools. Just now, like, I, hold one second. Just like yeah. how Scotty Scheffler stepping in Cam Smith's line looked like a fool. Yeah. So 
let's keep it classy. Let's be professional. There's no room for there's no, there's there's no room for that. I don't think we're gonna have uh, some some bad poor gamesmanship. We might, but uh, what happened? I want to say it might have been might have been at the open. I could be wrong. Um, there was some event in Europe. The the players on Live who played uh, were specifically put in their own groups and not put in the groups with actual European Tour or PGA Tour players. So if that happens, that that's more of an fu on part of the um, sponsors of the event at BMW and at the actual um, owners of the event, which would kind of be hilarious, but also um, probably probably even more pathetic when you think about it. Uh, but saw that was found it really interesting. I think they absolutely should be able to wear um, their live patches wherever they want. <sighs> ben PGA Tour cards have come out. Over twenty pros will well actually up to fifty will receive PGA Tour cards. We're here to talk about who's in and who's out of the race this year. Obviously, the Corn Ferry Tour Championship was this past week. Top twenty-five players will receive their tour cards in addition to another twenty-five who had qualified based on uh, other criteria through the Corn Ferry Tour this season. Uh, one of the biggest things that I should note with this, with the six players uh, who wound up going to live, they wound up losing uh, their um, their ranking on the PGA Tour. So the top, the top 125 on the PGA Tour final rankings are fully exempt for the following year. Um, if, you, if you have a win, you, you are exempt for the following 125 who become uh, fully exempt for the season. Because of the guys who did leave, some guys like Danny Willett, who missed the top top 125, will receive exemption because those names fell out. Therefore, he hops in. Uh, on the Corn Ferry Tour side, there were some guys who uh, who dropped out from the qualifying tour numbers and now jump in for Corn Ferry Tour. So six newcomers will be joining the field, uh, will, will be joining the show this upcoming year, including Justin Sue, who won the KFT final, one of the top players in the country, former uh, USC Trojan at 25 years old. He'll be coming in, but let's, but Ben, let's talk about who's in, who's out. Give me some names that we're going to be looking out for uh, this upcoming PGA Tour season, and who are some guys who missed out on their opportunity and will have to fight their way back next year? Okay, so real quick, let me just pull it up. I did not feel like writing this down at all. Uh, Don't worry, I, I feel you. 50 new players. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, so I'm just first, I'm going to go off of the top 25 that made it during the regular season. Um, players that I'm personally familiar with um, around my age, uh, Carl, Carl, uh, Carl Yon, Robbie Shelton, uh, Justin Sue, as you mentioned, Ben Griffin, Ben Taylor. Those are the, those are some of the guys, Byung-Hun An, uh, I believe he won – he might have won the USM or finished very high in the USM one year. Um, Eric Barnes, he actually plays out of a course down the road for me. He's a very strong player. Um, Michael Kim, uh, I believe he's actually played on the PGA Tour. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so – those are just some guys to look out for. Look, it's really hard. And this is something I want to stress to anybody listening. It is incredibly hard to go from the PGA for, to go from Corn Ferry Tour to the PGA Tour and have success as a rookie. Okay, you're playing completely different golf courses, courses you've never seen before. It's the best competition in the world. It is incredibly difficult. Okay, that's why it's so rare and so hard to see the, say... I don't know, hypothetically, 30-something rookies that you see make it all the way to the Tour Championship. It's incredibly hard. Cameron Young was a rookie, and he finished 19th. Okay? Just think about that for a second. So, it's the, yeah, those are some players just to watch for now. Um, I know Steven is going to go into the finals top 25 in a minute. But I just want everybody to understand it's going to be very, very difficult for these players because they're so young. They don't have that level of experience yet on these courses to compete right away. Not saying they can't, but temper your expectations. Might I add also to your Cameron Young comment? Uh, he had five top fives and still finished 19th. It's criminal. <laughs> it's criminal. Number one, it's criminal that he didn't win. 
like <laughs> it's so bad it's so unfortunate it's so unfortunate it's like dude how on un- honestly a lot of it's like kind of like bad luck it's like dude like top five machine as a rookie finishes 19th of the- i mean good for him like top you know yeah well championship. but i mean damn well what's the guy gotta do to get a win i think i think there's a disease going around with a little with the guys who come, who come out of Wake Forest and just can't get that first win for at least the first year on tour. Like, Will Zalatoris was like, where was this guy at for about a year and a half until he won at the FedEx St. Jude? His head was in the clouds with all the top, with all the, the T2s that was all over the board. The Masters, the Open, the U.S. Open, the PGA, the PGA Championship, the players. Like, where did this kid have, ha- like, go wrong? Well, he got shafted all these times. Well, and here's the thing: like people forget, Ricky Fowler is a household name. It took Ricky Fowler, and he played, uh, I believe, it took him like three years. It took him like three years. I think he played his first full season in 2010. It took him till the 2012 Wells Fargo to yeah. win his first tour event. That's Ricky Fowler. Ricky Fowler was like can't miss guy, and he's amazing. Okay, I love Ricky Fowler. It took him like two and a half years. I mean, that's crazy. Like, like that's just how that's just how it works sometimes. That's just how it goes. Well, I, I, I mean, it took Rory McIlroy three years before turning pro to, uh, to get his first win. Yeah, Rory turned pro in what in what oh seven and didn't get his first one until I think the Quail Hollow in twenty ten in May. Then 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 after that, didn't have a win for a whole another year. Then then it was the U.S. Open. Then a whole nother year passed. Then it was the Honda. Then a whole nother year passed. And then, then at that point, it was like the PGA, the BMW, and everything else. But like, it, success isn't immediate. And the fact that we've seen in a two year span, Scotty Scheffler go go to number one in the world. Uh, Will Zalatoris get his first win on tour. Colin Morikawa win two majors in what three years, and be the only player to ever, like be be the only player since Tiger Woods, and then prior to him was Jack to ever do that. Is like obscene. Now Cameron Young is doing this. Like we have not seen talent of this caliber in so long. And do I think a lot of the guys who are getting the who are getting the tour cards are going to be immediate talents? No. Probably, you might see two or three. Uh, Justin Sue is probably the one guy who stands out the most, just because his uh, his collegiate record was so strong. And actually, um, had they had automatic Q school uh, Q school running running through college to the Corn Ferry Tour, he would have already been on it. In which case he would have already he, he would have he would have already been on the PGA tour. Um, if it wasn't for that, he'd be there already and probably be really good. So you don't see it very often where guys just come out of nowhere, uh, like come up immediately and just um, play their heart out. I think we might see it if you see it in a few guys. I think a few guys who who won through the uh, KFT Championship have a, have a good shot. Obviously, uh, like I said, Sue number one, but um, Austin Eckroat he had a few uh, finishes. Uh, on sponsor exemptions, he has a bit of a story similar to uh, Sahith Tagala, who he made it on a lot of exemptions. He played really well. I think he finished top 20 of the Travelers, uh, not this past year, but I believe two years ago. Um, so so a lot of really good opportunity there. Uh, you, you have seen a few guys like Nick Hardy, Ryan Armour, uh, and, and Bryce Garnett. They have played previously on, on the PGA Tour and, and have had uh, experience, whether as a uh, sponsor exemption or, or actually did have a tour card in Ryan Armour's case. Uh, J- Joseph Brom with another guy there, Austin Cook. You have experience, though, specifically with Philip Knowles. Do you want to go a little bit uh, into detail on him? Yeah, so Philip Knowles, um, he played for University of North Florida, I believe, and we actually ended up playing a lot of junior tournaments against each other. I never got to play with him. I was never nearly as good as him. <laughs> uh, not even close. Uh, but there was a specific event. Uh, it was a Florida junior tour event. At oh man, it was Palm Air in Sarasota, and I at the time. So those are two rounds, Saturday and Sundays. He broke the two the thirty six hole scoring record. I think he shot like fourteen under over a span of two rounds, something oh crazy like that. So he's. And he's really good, and he's clearly had a very fast uh, rise now to the PJ Tour. So, oh, yeah. I mean, you I, you could – there are certain players that you're just like, oh, yeah, he's going to be on tour. Like, that's like a guy I'm like, that guy's got like – like, he's got a serious chance. So, no, I'm not at all surprised. 
So two other guys also who I uh, who I find really interesting. Sam Stevens. He actually shot tied the course record at the KFTT Championship. Sh- sh- shot a third round sixty two to get all the way down there, which is like incredible, even for a um, KFT like standard. He was absolutely awesome. And like you said, the competition to get into to get on the PGA Tour is is so significant. Once you're on it, let alone to actually make your way to it. Uh, the twenty fifth player, the last player to make the PGA Tour, Kyle Westmoreland, former U.S. Air Force captain, left the service, got into golf. He had uh, some sort of injury that barred him from playing, but, but like football or or, uh, or, or 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 a different sport, maybe rugby. That he uh, he wanted to pursue full time, couldn't play it, picked up golf, and has somehow at like the age of thirty managed to now make the PGA Tour, which is like obscene. Like it, like it, like you can obviously talk more about it, but to to even get to the Corn Ferry Tour is incredible for someone who, who who just picked up golf following his service time, like twenty years old. Let alone to finally make it uh, on the PGA Tour and get a, and, and, and get full exemption for the year. That's like obscene. Oh, you want me to talk about it? I mean, yeah, like like because because again, like we talk about about how hard it is, but from the pro standpoint, like it's. To, to even get even to the the higher rankings of Q school, like like the the levels to go through in order to find your way on the PGA Tour is like ridiculous, but to do it while also picking it up the game late and coming in as somebody who didn't even golf for a for a series of time because he was in the service, like wild. Yeah, I mean it's incredible because you see, I mean, look, like you see players who play their whole lives and that's it's an incredible accomplishment to even get to the corn Ferry tour or get to the pga tour let alone win um someone who has gone what he has gone through um and his kind of like life story um it's incredible the fact that he's like that he's at that level now it really is uh and it just i don't know him personally I've never heard him give an interview. I've never watched him play, but you can't help but feel good for someone like that because I mean, and also he was in the service. I mean, uh, like shout out to all our troops out there who have oh, yeah. served and currently serve. Uh, they keep us safe. Um, and that alone, I'm a fan of him just for that. And it just shows the, um, the dedication and the hard work. Uh, that he's put in because success in anything at a high level is not easy. And I think it's safe to say he's incredibly disciplined and um, good for him. That's amazing. It's an, it's an amazing, amazing accomplishment. Uh, and I'm sure he knows it, but I, I hope that he just, regardless of how this next year goes from the PGA tour, like he's one of like, not a very, very, very small percentage to do something so incredible so good for him oh yeah and i and i believe he's already uh on pace right now to put his name in for week one the 40 net, the 40 net champ which is going to happen in about two weeks uh in september so he so very well could see him in the first event of the year guys who guys who made it in guys who missed their shot on a pga tour card uh my favorite golfer grayson murray missed his shot at a pga tour card he can go fuck himself uh i fucking hate that guy so much despise that man uh will wait, McGurk, wait, wait 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 what's your beef why don't you like him i'm so oh you you never heard this no what happened did oh he, he, benny he, boy he, he tweeted you oh uh, yeah so wait um, what he did yeah no way yeah so the u.s open <laughs> oh. at, at the u.s open he he started like four over and kevin not started like four under um and i tweeted out uh, first four holes, Kevin Na four under, uh, Grayson Murray four over. This beef is literally not like like it, it's 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 happenstance. And he commented back after he had made the cut and Na missed the cut. He goes uh, like he he made some some dumbass comment like oh like like shouldn't speak too soon, buddy. And so I had like like a string of cult supporters of Grayson Murray commenting at me like oh like like you're an ass screw you and, and so i was like all right like i'm just gonna wait 
And then he went on round three and four, and he finished like second to last because he went like 11 over on Sunday. Uh, and ha- and he, he started like triple, double, triple, and broke and like flung his putter uh, like into the water. And it was like, and it was a total show. And then I, then I tweeted back out um, after he had blocked me. I was he like, blocked well, you? Yeah, he blocked me. <laughs> I actually, the, I, I, I tweeted this on the get in the whole Twitter. So, so actually, he blocked us. I want you to send me everything. Like, wait, so what exactly? Like, what? <laughs> wait, so what were you tweeting though? What were you saying about him and Kevin? Nah, I'm so confused. All right, hold on. Let me go. Let me go back. And you have to give me like the whole scoop because you must. You obviously pissed him off for something. Yeah. Um. All right, hold on. So let me. Let me find this. All right, hold on. I'm I'm going. going. Yeah, through four holes, Kevin not two under Grayson Murray four over. The rivalry isn't even close. At Grayson Murray's game is on Pluto. Wait, what rivalry though? What rivalry? Uh, Grayson Murray like gave shit, like talked shit to Kevin Na about uh. Like slow play and like set, and like blamed him for like him not playing well because uh, because of Kevin not slow play and it's the same thing with like Bryson and like it started it started this like big giant beef and that week at the U.S. Open in the locker room uh, at Brookline they put Na and Murray and Murray's locker together so like well so, like, I mean alphabetically that makes sense but go ahead yeah but like but like like there was drama there and like a whole thing so basically I commented about it. Um, and I got, I, I got destroyed on Twitter, like comments, like abode. I want you to, to screenshot those and send I them. will. Yeah. Um, and then, so, so that happened, uh, and, oh God, just like, like a bunch of different tweets and like back and forth, he commented back at us. I, I gotta see if I, if I can like find, um, exactly like what he said, cause he blocked us. So I don't think I could see his comment. But I'm sure I could find it like somewhere. I bet um, I could find it. What? I bet I could find it, right? Probably you could. Oh, hold on, wait, wait, here. Okay. Is this it? <laughs> oh, all right. So, so yeah. So he tweeted it at us. I, I can't see it. It literally says deleted because we're blocked. And then I commented back, please tell me you saw this yesterday after your round, screenshot it, and use it as motivation. That would actually make my day. And he said, I don't need motivation for from you dumbass. And then basically this whole thing blew up. Uh, he wound up playing terrible. This was, this was a video of him after he started triple, double, triple. Oh, I'm the putter, seeing that. Flung the putter into the shrubbery. And I tweeted out, looks like Grayson Murray isn't having a fun Sunday at the U S open. Guess our chirps were true. And then, Oh yeah, here, yeah, here. Yeah. This is, this is the tweet. Oh my god! How'd that work out, pal? And then I tweeted at, tweeted out this where he was ten over on the final day, uh, and like like did, like played worse than some amateurs. And I tweeted out, "It isn't about how you start; it's how you finish." And so that was the whole beef with us and Grayson Murray. So I I I hate him, and he lost his shot at, at a PGA Tour card. So he'll be fighting it out uh, on the KFT this season. Uh, some other guys who missed out on the shot, and again, we'll, we'll talk more about it like later, um, off air. But uh, Will McGirt missed out missed out, out, out on his shot. BYU alumni uh, Patrick Fishburn came oh so close. He just barely missed out, uh, and a few other names. I believe uh, Camille Viegas also might have just missed it. I I'd have to go back and look at that. But just some names to uh, look out for that you will not be seeing on the PGA Tour this year unless they have a um, sponsorship exemption. Final break here. When we come back, we have some discussions on the new PGA Tour rules. Ben's going to give us a little deep dive into what he thinks about it. Uh, he texted me before the show and said, this is going to be an absolute roast fest, so I'm very excited to see it was, what Ben... It was the PIP that I'm roasting. Relax. Well, we'll see. We have a lot more on that. And also, the awards season. Who's going to win some of the biggest awards in golf this year? Don't go anywhere. We will be right back here on Getting the Hole. Welcome back in to Get in the Hole. Steve McAvoy and Ben Pirro here with you on a uh, on a terrific Monday on Labor Day. By the way, didn't tell anybody. Happy Labor Day. 
Happy very, Labor Day. By the way, very, I just want to say funny. you completely went to break before I could mention any players that happened to miss out on their tour cards. So, oh, uh, please, if you have if you have important players, let me know. You're such a jerk. Um, I'm so, a doll. What? No, you're not. Um, <laughs> I am the darling of this podcast. I don't no, want to hear you're it. Not. I am. The world loves me. Who do you think you are? I am. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Wesley Bryan. Uh, Miss Donna's tour car, former PJ Tour winner, won the 2017 RBC Heritage. Uh, he missed out on his tour car and actually had a pretty incredible comeback, if you guys don't know. Uh, he was plus seven through his first nine holes of the event and proceeded to play his next uh, 27 holes and nine under just to make the cut. So uh, proud of Wesley for fighting it out. Didn't work out the way we wanted it to for him. Another player, Jonathan Bird, former PJ Tour winner, beautiful golf swing. Some other players, Tommy Ganey, Aaron Baddeley, Kiradek, Arpi Bonrat. Uh, oh, not the barn rat. Yeah, Sung you'll know, Shame. Jonas Blixt, uh, Harry Higgs. Um, missed, I didn't even realize he, would, he lost his card at all. Yeah, I didn't realize that. That's a bummer. Yeah. But yeah, so before I was, we were rudely put into break. Ah, uh, just wanted to get that in there. I'm so. sorry. I, I I totally apologize. So Ben, we're we're gonna open the book up. We're gonna talk about the new PGA Tour rules here in 2023. Me and KB talked about it a little bit last week, but I want to get the pros' perspective here. I uh, I have the entire list down, uh, written down, so we can kind of go through things, um, and see what we like, see see what we don't like. But I want to get your opinion on just about everything that we have in oh, coming to us in the world of golf in 2023. So let's start off with these elevated events and what we know about them so far. Um, there will be 12 elevated events. Four of them are to be determined uh, as of right now. Um, the, the Memorial, the uh, WGC Match Play, Genesis Invitational, Century, Century Tournament Champions, the four majors, uh, as well as a few others, will uh, be getting upgraded purses to upwards of $25 million, uh, the highest in PGA Tour history, possibly even higher than the actual majors themselves. We're, we got to see where the money will totally um, shake out. There was rumors of only 60-man field. I don't know if that's going to happen. They didn't officially say it uh, in the tour letter. But initially, what do we think of these new upgraded events? Okay. Um, personally, for me... Uh... Some of them I like, some of them I don't like. In years past, WGC events have basically been elevated tour events. Um, so this really is nothing new uh, to anybody out there. That It was just based on world ranking points. It didn't matter what tour you played on as long as you were top 60 or 64, or whatever the criteria was to play, That's you got to play and you got a free paycheck. Uh, that being said, look, the Century Tournament of Champions, it's a Tournament of Champions. If you didn't win the year before, you shouldn't be playing. Plain and simple, okay? Um, and then events like the Memorial and the Players, uh, the Genesis Open uh, in Los Angeles at, uh, what is the name of the course? Riviera. Riviera. I mean, those three events, I just feel like they're ruining those events by making those, uh, you know, anybody can play yeah. all four rounds i just think it's ridiculous and they're limiting they're supposedly they're going to limit the sizes of the fields those are some of the best events and why would you why would you limit those fields one second my mac is about to die yeah yeah you're totally fine they, they've also only announced um that there's four others to be determined and i'm a little nervous because as of right now again it's the memorial the genesis uh bay hill is going to get an upgrade as well um so these are some big time events the four that might also jump into the fold, and I don't, don't know if it's going to happen quite yet, if the waste management uh, turns over, all of a sudden now you're going to lose, what, like the five or six biggest events that isn't the players uh, and the majors and everything. And, like, um, I believe – so so, so there, there was an additional rule that players, uh, fully exempt players, will agree to a 20-event schedule, which is going to be the, all the elevated events, plus, like, five events of their choosing. Like, yeah, it's all well and great, but you have to apply, like, like, like be exempt to, to play in these events. And if you can't, you can't. So, like, yeah, maybe the top 125 will be eligible to play in, like, the Genesis. But, like, what's going to happen if you have a guy who's totally, like, out of left field? 
like Max Homa was a top 100 player in the world, but going into when he won it at Genesis wasn't a, he was a household name on Twitter, but not necessarily in the golf world. It didn't have a pro win yet and yet managed to win there. So you see a lot of guys play really well in these big time events. It's again, a matter of the, of the poor stay poor and the, and the rich get richer where it's the top players um, that get elevated and whatnot. Jo- joining us real fast, uh, our good friend to the show, Kyle Bennett. I don't know what what, what just happened to this uh, this overlay. It's kind of went to absolute shit. There it is. Kyle Bennett joining us. Uh, what up, heard, boys? Heard Grayson Murray got the boot. Wants to give a comment. I I had to chime in. Uh, this is a this is an emergency press conference. Uh, my the CEO's on the line. My my only words to one Grayson Murray as. We are his least favorite podcast. Rip Bozo. What an absolute <laughs> loser. What a schmuck. He deserves it. And now he's just, you know, he he's he's just, he's the worst. And he's no better than us now. No tour card. Bye-bye. Okay, so when I'm on tour, I'm still going to be doing this. Yes. As long as you let me, and we're Always. going to have you get the whole logo, stitch it into my bag. Yes. And I hope you know. Yes. And it's going to be incredibly awkward if I ever end up playing with him. <laughs> I mean, I think it'd be hilarious. Because uh, oh, yeah, it's hilarious for you. Of it's it's the new Brooks versus Bryson. <laughs> it's Ben versus Grayson. Well, actually, it, it, it'd be even more funny if, 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 like, once Ben, like, starts out, like, in Q school, and let's just say, like, Grayson Murray just, like, falls off a cliff, right? And he and he, fi- he finds himself off the Corn Ferry Tour, and it's, like, battling back. Goes from the, from the literal beginnings. And then he's playing with Ben. And watches Ben elevate, and he just keeps on falling. That would be... Oh, that will just prove here. how mentally inept he is. Would would actually make my like life where we live so rent free in his head. <laughs> We're building hotels. Sky, we we are building the city of Manhattan. We are like the Monopoly board, just collecting all the pieces. Give us all the big pieces. Bo- boardwalk, park place. Ben just walks park. by and gives him a little wave, and he's just like, Ugh. Up, dude? Or, or Ben's or, or Ben's like, hey, walks on his line. That no, was, that's not like that. Gr- gr- I know Ben's a lot more polite than that, but that, that knowing Grayson Murray, that would like get his grinds going. Ben just says, Here's "Hey, big on. head," and then he just turns into the Jimmy Butler from the Bubble meme, and he just leans over his bag like, <laughs> "Oh God, not All these right, guys well, again." <laughs> KB, uh, unfortunately, we kind of have, have to push you out. Um, totally we've... fine. We're like going very over on this show. Uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're gonna, considering it took me ten minutes to, to explain the Grayson Murray beef to uh, to Ben. That's incredible. <laughs> Literally went back in the archives to find the old tweets. It's so funny. Hey, I know there's no there's no picks this week, but shout out to Kenwood, the new merch. It's incredible. Go Bro, get that go, stuff. Go go cop that stuff. What's the uh, that promo code? Uh, that's for our use only. So. Oh damn. Really? Sorry to the sorry to the peoples, but it's it's just for the the content people only. But uh, go get go get the rope hats. Go get the it's a bad day to be a Kenny shirts because uh, they're gonna go quick. I will say this: like while that code is for us, you could go to the Underground Sports Philadelphia website and apply to work for us, and then you can get that there code. Go. So just think of it that way. There By the way, go. KB, while we're here, because uh, we could talk about it like later uh, towards the back end. How about this YouTube channel? T- tell yeah, the, baby. Tell the, great tell the stuff. How we're doing. Great stuff. Uh, unreal growth in the month of August. Getting the whole big part of that. Obviously, uh, subscribe to that YouTube channel because I'm sure you and Ben are going to come up with uh, your one- Road to 1K Gauntlet Challenge leg as uh, we did on streamer season. Tonight, Top Bins announced theirs. Uh, so you'll be getting the, getting the whole leg. You'll be getting the Underground Sports Philadelphia leg. And... OTB is pulling, you know, lacrosse players and coaches for ideas in the PLL. So stay tuned for that. And Coach Dan Russo from Violent High School Football is also going involve, getting involved with the Dan Russo show. So stay nice. tuned. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And uh, let's keep this thing rocking and rolling. Boys, have a good rest of the show. See you, buddy. Dad. Take it easy. Kyle Bennett, ladies and germs, here on 
to get the whole podcast. All right, so let's talk about where we where we were at uh, in our lovely world. So PGA Tour rules. We have the uh, the elevated events. Uh, something that I that I think is very interesting now is the now minimum salary that we're going to introduce onto onto the Corn Ferry Tour and PGA Tour. Five hundred thousand dollars players will receive if they do not earn that during the season. There is a pool uh, that will basically give pay out the dividend of whatever you did not um, make that year. So let's say you make 490K, um, they'll give you the 10K. Uh, a lot of that's going to go towards your travel, your caddying fees, which is a lot similar. Like, like we said, uh, these rules that, 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 that Live Golf has spurred over to the PGA Tour, um, where in Live, everything's paid for. Now, players are given the opportunity to pay for their caddy and also uh, accommodate their own fees where on the Corn Ferry Tour and, of course, PGA Tour, uh, you will now be able to actually receive benefits to um, prolong your career. Also, missed cuts. You will receive, I believe, a ten thousand dollars stipend. I think it is, which is like a really good uh, overall payout. So good. So good for everybody uh, on both tours to be able to receive these benefits. Ben, what do you think about it? I just think that they've been listening to me because th- these are basically all of my amazing ideas. It's so, a big win. I know it's a big win. It's a big win for the boys. Uh, no, I think it's great. In all seriousness, uh, it's about time they did something. Um, I do think it's a little bit weird that Corn Ferry players' base salary is the same as the PJ Tours' base salary, but whatever. Look, I mean, that's like a that's an issue for another day. Yeah. At least, like we are making progress with this because it's incredibly hard to make money in golf. It is, and the only way you make money historically is by making cuts. And at the least now, this gives P players uh, and families financial stability uh, because flying and traveling is as expensive as it has ever been. Oh, yeah. Um, everything is much more expensive now. And so this will help with food, hotels, caddies, entry fee, like that. So I'm very, very happy about it. The other biggest thing that's, that, that will, will be changing uh, on tour, and it's time for the Rose Fest. Uh, the new PIP has been released. We're going to be getting rid of the social media metric, expanding from 10 players to 20 players and boosting that purse from 50 million to 100 million. What, do you, what don't you like about it? Well, they took out the social media aspect. That's what I hate about it. And they have these metrics that they use, which I don't believe the actual numerical numbers are given to the public. So, in my opinion, Tiger Woods is going to win again, and Roy McIlroy is going to finish second again. And literally because last year Tiger Woods won it, didn't hit a single shot, uh, and Roy McIlroy finished second. Well, now that they've come out with this basically like live copycat thing, Stadium Golf, which in my opinion is, I don't like it at all. I think it's, I'm not going to watch it. Um, they're immediately getting searched on Google now. And now, Google search is still one of the criteria. Well, hold on. So one of the big things, though, that, 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 that they're going to introduce is, is the um, the relevancy matter. So if you don't play the whole year, you're going to take a hit. Uh, it's guys who earn a lot of wins are also going to, going to be getting more. It, it, it's based on your relevancy throughout the year. So if you have one win on the year or you're a guy who had 12 top 10s, like like the relevancy meter is kind of rolling towards the guy who has who has more top tens, who's more consistent, I guess you could say. Um, so guys like a Max Homa, who well yeah you might well yeah he's known he's not on social, didn't really do much for him anyways in the PIP last year. Now though he had 15 top tens, so all of a sudden he very well might be getting a look now uh, with more and more. We'll see how, how that goes, but you're saying. But is it weighed evenly? That's the thing, because there's multiple criteria involved yeah. in this scale. What's the weighting? In my opinion, like I looked at it, I looked at the list briefly from last year. I think Jordan Speed was like third. Really? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Like Dustin Johnson was like seven. Dustin Johnson does what what is there like that's appealing about Dustin Johnson? Like, as far as like he hasn't put out content, he barely ever posts on social media. Yeah. Like, give me a break. Yeah. I mean, hey, like, like Bryson, I think, was outside, the, was outside of the top 10 with Max Homa. They're probably two of the more active guys on social. Bryson was number six, I think. Six? Um, but, like, 
I think it's ridiculous that Max Homo was inside the top 10. He is absolutely hilarious. Uh, or someone like, I don't know, I'm just going to throw a name out there. Wesley Bryan, his brother George, um, has his own YouTube channel, George Bryan, and they're actually known as the Bryan Brothers. That's what the YouTube channel is called. And originally they were known for doing trick shots. Uh, they were two young mini tour players, and they ended up doing trick shots, and they actually traveled across the country and across the world doing, you know, um, George would chug up a ball, pop it up, and then Wesley would hit it, and they'd do, like, different bank shots and stuff. And, yes, like, I get it, like, the YouTube channel is now operated by George, the older brother, but, like, Wesley's still in almost every single, it, probably in half yeah. of the episodes on there. Wesley's not going to sniff the top 20, I promise you. And it's a, it, they have, like, 150,000 subscribers. Like, it's a very successful YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, I feel like, in my opinion, it should just be voted by the players. That's what it should be. Interesting. Now, do you think there there would be any, like, discrepancies, though, if it was solely based on the players' uh, thoughts? No, not at all. Because, I in, like, I mean, just say you can't vote for yourself. And if you're a, if for that season you were a full time member, you vote. Interesting. I think that it's compl- I think it's completely fair. I think it would make sense if you, if you did like a like a rank the top five, and then based on the note, like like first place gets five points, second place gets four, and whoever has the most points at that point, because then you really are kind of measuring the whole like wide range uh, when you think about it, which I think makes sense. But that being said, though, now with this new thought, what do you think the predictions are going to be? Who will who will finish on top? You said you said Tiger and Rory. You still think will finish uh, um, one and two? But mm-hmm. do you think we might be we might finally see any, any sort of parity with these new uh, rankings? Uh, I mean, I'm sure Max Homo will finish. I, I would hope that he deserves to finish at least top five. Um, in my opinion, I was talking to Sophia about it today. Um, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Bring her on. Let's talk about it. Come over here. <laughs> <laughs> Join the fold. I feel so famous. I mean, you're you're really not. We're a very small podcast, so you're. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome in. What do we think of the PIP? So I think the way they did it before was better when they used social media as like the main form of measurement. Because Ben and I were talking about this today. That like, and he said it earlier that they're kind of just choosing who they want now. So like the tour can pick whoever they want. They don't have to really justify it to anybody. So it's basically lining the pockets of whoever they think is doing the best for them, which might be the same as what the public thinks, but it might not be. Yeah. I think all of our match interviews should get some PIP earnings for you. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, no, who are these commenters? Oh, it's KB. Oh, oh. It, it, it's Kyle. Look, I mean, I, I do think that the PIP is, is regardless, it's going to be swayed because, like, like Ben and I talk about it every week. It's the the rich are still going to get richer. There isn't like a like unless you're unless you are like Wesley Bryan, right? Who has I don't even know how, how many tour wins uh, he has. One on PJ Tour, three on Corn Ferry. Perfect. Like he isn't making Rory McIlroy money, anyways. So yeah, should he get more money? Absolutely, considering where he ranks. Does Tiger Woods need more? He's a fucking billionaire. Like, what does it matter at this point? Like, he, it, it, he, basically, the money that that he's going to get is going to fund Charlie's entire career if he, if he really wanted that badly. Like, like, what does it matter that we're going to have um, these these obscene PIP numbers and also like a hundred million dollars to get split up against across twenty guys? We already know that the PJ Tour is a billion-dollar industry. Why not put it towards something a little better? I think it's all kind of BS. And I said it last week. The PIP just makes absolutely no sense. Like, like cool, it's great to award guys for content. I guess it's the way of um, getting guys to post more. Like Bryson said, the reason why he started to post more and, and join up with um, like Regent and all these companies was because of the PIP. But, well, he's gone anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But well, Bryson's posts were all – you could tell they were written by, like, a oh, yeah. or a social media uh, manager. Yep. Yeah, of course. Like, you get like Max Homa or Wesley Bryan or Joel Damon's another good one. Like you can tell they're just naturally funny guys that enjoy tweeting. Like they would be tweeting the same stuff whether they were working in like an accounting office or if they were on the PGA tour, they would still be saying the same yep. stuff. Exactly. So there's our thoughts on the PIP. Sophia, would you like to join us for our uh, awards talk? 
Sure, if I'm allowed. <laughs> sure. No, look, look, you're more than welcome to. This is kind of like, like you're welcome in. At, at, at some point, you'll be formally introduced as a guest, but uh, we'll give it some time. It's award season on, on the PGA Tour, and it's time to give out uh, our essentially our uh, well, like Oscars uh, of the, of the PGA season. And we're uh-huh. going to start with the Player of the Year. I think it's pretty clear who uh, kind of stands out here. But Ben, who do you think should win the the Jack Nicholas Player of the Year award? I want to hear what you have to say first. I mean, it's Carly Scheffler. Um, oh my it's... God, you got one right! <laughs> oh my God, you got one right! I'm so proud of you. Oh my gosh, you finally got one right. Wow. I mean, you know what? I'm gonna piss you off. It should actually be Rory. I'm thinking about no, it now. No, 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 no. I no. No, you look, he's such a fool. What? Are you kidding what? me? Really? <laughs> the, fighting, the fighting words. Oh my god. No, I mean. <sighs> Could you not give it to, to, to Scotty at this point? Um, the, his, what, the first four months of the season was just absolutely epic. Uh, nothing probably since Tiger Woods has ever compared to that. I mean, it, the only way Rory takes it is if, oh, of course, he won the, uh, the, the the tour final. He has, what, two other wins on the year. One of them happened uh, back in November at at, this, at Summit where wasn't really, where the field wasn't even that um, strong to begin with. And the wins in general and just what he's been able to do the whole year and the, the consistent top tens, I think, makes Scotty Schiffler an easy winner. But I can easily see Rory getting consideration considering he was the only player to finish top ten in every major, uh, finish top ten at, at, at the players, top won the tour final, finished top ten at the BMW. Like, like the numbers here kind of make sense. Uh, but, yeah, it should be Scotty. Yeah. I, th- I think I kind of know your answer here. Yeah, it's Scotty. I'm so happy you finally got one right. Oh my gosh, this just made my day. I I, I don't know. I think I think Rory deserves it. He's just a shot. Dude, he didn't win a major though. Are on... but he won the biggest event of the year, arguably. Who cares? Not the biggest event of the year. He was very good. That's very great. Good, that's that's bad. so great. So is Adam Scott. Adam Scott was very good this year. Um, Sam Burns, who burned you, was also very, very good. Oh, oh, ha, 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 ha. Funny joke. Smith than yes. yes, actually, you could. Because he won what? the players and the Open. Yeah, I think Cam Smith does probably get some sort of recognition, but I, I, it, Jay Monahan would never will himself to ever think in any moment in his life to um, ever give someone on Live Tour any satisfaction. Well, Jay Monahan needs a pay cut first. That's number one. But Jay Monahan needs to get fired. Just, just give it to Tiger. Or me, honestly. So, no. like, 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 real, like, total sidebar to all this. Tiger Woods should just be the commissioner of golf. Like, there's, there's no reason why Jay Monahan should even be in the role that he's in. He's yeah. butchered, he's butchered the entire year, honestly. <laughs> probably, yeah. probably, like the most cataclysmic year of go- in golf history. He just butchered it. But that's just me. Rookie of the year, Otto Palmer Award. Who? <laughs> is there any question that it isn't Cameron Young? Wow, we're actually agreeing on stuff. This is amazing. It's like the Twilight Zone. I know, right? Yep, finished uh, uh, 19th in the FedEx Cup. Had numerous top five finishes. We were just talking about before how it's like, how did he not win? Um, he deserves it. He was incredible. He is inc- he is incredible. Good for him. There you go. Comeback player of the year. This is the one that, that, that actually has some ounce of debate. Now, please, I, I want you That's to lead off. Adam Scott. Adam Scott. Is it is it dumb of me to say that it's Will Zalatoris? Like considering he did yeah. considering, yeah. considering he did oh put those pants down. <laughs> considering he didn't get that first win all of last year, had to fight his way through and that's not, that's a, not comeback. a comeback. That's though. not a comeback. You are like are you like on drugs? All right. Dennis Schroeder won the NBA comeback player of the year. After a year, he, he he put up 20 points a game and won the sixth man of the year. The comeback player of the year last year was not even like anybody who you would have thought it like thought it would have been. It was a, it was a, actually I got to look back and see who that was. Why are but, you comparing golf to NBA? The comeback player of the year is never actually a true comeback, unless really honestly it should be Tiger Woods. Adam Scott truly really is a. If, if we're really talking about about comeback player of the year, it's Tiger Woods. He played golf with, with with what was almost two amputated legs. That's fair. I would say that that's like 
That's fair. You have to play at a high level, though. He didn't play at a high level. But his didn't... legs were almost cut off his body. And he golfed. He walked four rounds at Augusta National. He did make the cut at Augusta. I would say that's a comeback, but in a different way. That's like more of a moral victory. That's than a like moral a victory. victory. That's a moral victory. More than it is a physical victory. Also, Kyle's commented, uh, Zalatoris is more qualified for, more, for most improved, not comeback. All right, so I, I agree with that. See, this... Most improved players will Zalatoris, easily. But yeah, uh, comeback, I, I would say Tiger should get it. Because um, it, it makes sense. Considering the, the, considering the, the tumultuous outcome that, that he had, with, again, literally said, I almost amputated my legs, uh, to walk Augusta, and even like playing the, those few rounds at the open was still impressive to begin. Like, yeah, it took how what, three months off, four months off. Um, still impressive. Like the guy's look, walking. Look, I am not discounting what Tiger accomplished. Okay, it is an incredible comeback. He could have died, uh, could have lost his leg, but he did not compete at a high level. If it was best story of the year, that would go to Tiger, in my opinion, because that's a great Agreed. story. Okay. He's not comeback player of the year unless he wins a, a tournament or something. Okay. It's, okay. I'm just saying. I'm just no, saying. No, that's okay. And I'm not discounting what he went through at all. I don't yeah. want anybody thinking that I'm discounting what he went through, but he didn't play well enough to win comeback player of the year. And he didn't play enough, period. That's fair. I'll give you that. So but yeah, it's Adam Scott, so whatever. Did Adam Scott eat, eat, did Adam Scott even play that good outside of the last what ten weeks of the year? What's up? What was Adam Scott that good outside of the final like ten he weeks was of the year? Getting better. But he, then he, he was when he just climbing. He was like seventy seventh going into the FedEx Cup playoffs. And finished where did he finish in the final? I think he got, to, he got to East Lake, yeah. 29th, I think. Okay, so he, he made it there. An honorable mention could be made for Ricky Fowler because he did start to play better. Oh, he did. Oh, Ricky he did Fowler. To, he finished it was so bad. It's still bad, but like he had some good, like he shot like 65 in the first round. Oh, yeah. Look, I, look, I'm just saying two weeks ago, I shot 85 at Beth Page Yellow. That's not, that isn't comeback player of the year material here. I had one round in the 80s the entire year. All of a sudden, I'm like, I'm okay, like, God. Year, the comeback player of the year for 2023, Ricky Fowler. I actually was going to say it's going to be Ricky Fowler. Maybe, but. Oh, that, that 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 decline has been so bad in in the last year year and a half to two years now. It, it's like it, it's just it's stumbling every single week, and it's so sad to see. I kind of thought he was going to go to live, to be honest. It's kind of like kind of fits their mold of like it, players that were really popular, really famous, and now aren't playing well. It it, it it would make complete sense. I'm I'm still upset. Harry Higgs lost his tour card. This is like shameful. Is that your boy? Do you like Harry Higgs? Uh he was like he was like the uh the unicorn get for this show. Like I wanted Harry Higgs to be on the show. Like funny dude um is like a more handsome version of me. <laughs> we both don't like shirt buttons. Like it like like this makes a lot of sense. Ben's like pissed off me. All right, we're going to go. On that note, thank you guys so much for listening in to get in the whole thing. Thank you, Sophia, for hopping on those last uh, 10 minutes. Good conversations. Me and Ben, of course, had to get our our, our one shouting, shouting match in at some point. Because you're completely ridiculous. You really are. You're completely ridiculous. You just, you know, we were having such a good time. We were agreeing on things, which is bizarre in and in of itself. And then you were just like, oh, yeah, Tiger should win comeback player. I'm going to oh, reveal yeah. a really sad uh, sports media fact for you. Skip Bayless makes money because he's tossed out of his ass. Yeah, and Skip Bayless also said that. Shows him. get yeah. views because, pe because people try and stir the pot. Uh-huh. That's why I do what I do. Sometimes, sometimes do I have conviction in what I say? Absolutely. But sometimes I, I say things to kind of get aroused, and I get, I get a pretty good rouse out of you. So, yes, tap on the shoulder.
I, I am now I'm now rooting so hard for Sophia in, in her next challenge. I hope she I, I hope she kicks her ass. You've got a match I know, tomorrow. No, look, oh no, no 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 no. I know <laughs> nobody ever roots for me in our challenges. For well, yeah, fact. of course. Because my mom doesn't even root for me. Just, ben, you're, Ben, you're more unlikable on the course than Patrick Reed. What's that? You're more unlikable than Patrick Reed on the golf course. That's wow. Funny. Yeah, I got him. Why? Because, I got him. Why? Because I'm incredibly handsome and jacked. Is that why? And I have great style. That's probably why. I mean, I have good style and nice triceps. So, like, <laughs> you have the biceps. I have the triceps. Like, it, like. Oh, all right. I, I, I'm editing this. Goodbye, everybody. Ha